Hello everyone, um, welcome back to Life is Strange. Um, I'm going to let the story play out and then I'm going to say a message. After that I'm going to start broadcasting. But this one's just going to be recorded first. Once upon a time, in a wild, wild world, there were two wolf brothers living in their home lair with their papa wolf. They lived in peace until hunters took their dad away. And they had to go on the run. That's when the big brother discovered that the little one was not an ordinary wolf, but a super wolf. They discovered a secret hideout where they could train day and night. They were happy. But the little wolf got very sick, and they had to move on. The brothers made it to the home of their ancestors, and the old wolves took care of them. Unfortunately, the hunters were hot on their trail and found them. The brothers had nowhere to stay again, so they decided to keep going south. They soon entered the old forest of the giants, where they met a pack of stray dogs who worked in a secret farm. The brothers joined them and worked hard to stock up on gold for the future. They were happy to find others like them, and everybody loved the little wolf, who was growing up fast. His power was growing, too. The little wolf was more and more confident and independent. The big brother hooked up with a cool she-dog. <sighs> they had their own adventures. Suddenly, the mean farmers who owned the land tried to hurt the brothers. The little cub was injured. He transformed into a super wolf. And destroyed everything. The big brother was badly wounded. And worse, he didn't know where the little cub was. Okay, so... As you know, some stuff went down in the last um, game. Uh, well, episode. I chose not to be friendly with the boss, which is um, something I try to keep it professional and not delve in there. And looking back, there was a lot of wrong choices again. But the difference is now... Well... So, two weeks ago I went on holiday and... I was away with my nephews, uh, and uh, yeah, I had to look after them. They're they're very little. Uh, they're just kids. They're just babies, basically, toddlers. And I had to look after them. But the one um, is very much monkey see, monkey do, and I had to watch my language and how I was around them. Hey, Sean. And... I'm sorry. Everything, really. I didn't mean to. It was a bad idea. Mm. Daniel. No way. It's all good. So, yeah. So, now I Wish think... Wish I listened. When you tried to stop me from going with Finn. I've learnt more. I was too pissed. <sighs> it's okay, dude. But not You're about brother. teenagers. And that's all that so. counts. So, why don't you come and get me? He's not with us at the moment, is he? I'm alone, Sean. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. I was going to say, how did I'm we scared. get back here? Don't get so close to that edge. Please. Come and get me. Yes, I, I swear. 
Uh, stop! And here we are, in the hospital bed. So, the other thing I wanted to go over today was, um, before we start the video proper and before I do my broadcast, um, there was a, a riot, well, a protest, I should say, not a riot, it was a protest in London uh, today about, well, uh, the video link says 13 hours ago, which the time frame doesn't really match up that well, but basically they were protesting and saying, you know, uh, let's not go, um, let's have our let's be free basically let's get out of COVID it doesn't exist or uh, we want to be free um, we don't want to turn into totalitarian state um, and a lot of people might find that distasteful I find that distasteful because we're all in the same boat there's a lot of us who like locked down to save others and a lot of us did it to protect the elderly and protect our relatives, our older relatives. My uh, nan went down with COVID. She made a full recovery. She was so praising of the uh, NHS. No, nothing ever gets her down. But um, my other nan is a little bit older and a bit more vulnerable and maybe a little more, I don't know, naive about these things because she doesn't have access to the internet and she doesn't really apart from TV she can see what's going on but she's very old and we wanted to keep her protected and for that reason I didn't go and see her so when I see um, sometimes I because I work in a shop as you know I have to deal with people who are um, uh, just non maskers uh, CDs we call them COVID deniers uh, when we see a CD my usual response is not to engage just be polite and get them out of the shop as quickly as possible because I don't want anyone else to be infected or affected or uh, get angry or start something because they're basically looking for attention um, any sort of attention and they were denied it probably in their lives and they just want attention any kind even if it's negative they want that fuel to their fire they want to fight they want to have an argument uh, that's all I seem to see is people wanting to have arguments I was serving someone and they were ramming their trolley into this little old lady in front I said can you just back off please and he said why is that a COVID thing I said no it's a politeness thing you you're hitting her in the back of the legs. She's going to fall over. She's a very old, frail woman. And you could see the disappointment on that guy's face. So disappointed that I didn't say COVID. Because he wanted me to say it. Because he wanted to engage. And that's all they want is attention of any kind. And they'll go to great lengths to achieve it sometimes. Um, but today I actually did engage in the comments in a YouTube video um, I said it was very ironic the protest and immediately about five or six people were like disliking the comments and like slamming me and uh, this one guy in particular um, some of the comments were in instantly deleted I believe but uh, one guy in particular said that uh, this country is trying to turn itself into a totalitarian state. They're trying to uh, martialize us. They're trying to keep us indoors. And I, I couldn't help but feel very angry because I'm drawing parallels to places like North Korea. And um, Hong Kong is a great example of that where um, rioters were just holding umbrellas and they were attacked by police just a year ago they were attacked by police and he was like oh oh no mate that that's what we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid that and I'm like the irony is simple in my mind by protesting we might not like the fact that you protest we might find it distasteful but you are allowed to protest you are allowed to stand at the gates and protest you're n 
they were throwing tennis balls um, at Downing Street and they were allowed to do that. The police were allowing them to do that. If it turned violent, then I'm sure the police, riot police would have gone in, but it didn't turn violent. They were throwing things at the police, just tennis balls and softballs. There was nothing of like sharp objects. If it had gone on to like a full blown riot, I think then the police would have responded. But it was a peaceful protest. There wasn't anything too untowards about it. So by allowing them to protest and allowing them their freedom of speech, it's ironic because they're pr disproving their own points by being there. They're saying that Britain wouldn't allow them to speak. Britain allowed them to speak on multiple occasions. They were allowed to speak only when it was turning violent, only when they were putting people's lives in danger were they arrested or pulled in. The police have done a really good job, I think, of keeping this safe in this country. The NHS have done an amazing job on keeping us safe in this country. People in general have done a great job. And yeah, you say every now and again there's that person that snaps, that person that... I mean, we've all had our moments, I think, over the last year and a half where we've let it get to us and had a little cry or had a little angry outburst and I'm guilty of that, I will admit. I first, After the first couple of months of lockdown, I'm very... All my family is very close by and not being able to see anyone I did have a little cry and um, I spent the whole day in tears. I was just so upset and I'm not the one to show that kind of emotion usually but I just I just cried myself the entire day because I couldn't see them and then the next day you get yourself back together and you get on with it and I'm very much that sort of person. You just got to get on with it at the end of the day and like CDs and like anti-vaxxers and people that say they don't exist, they are in their minority. It may not seem so at times, but there are more of us than them. And, you know, we might not like that that's their opinion, but that is their opinion. And they are allowed to speak it because this is a free society, because people are allowed to express themselves in that way. Now if they turn violent, if they go up, step over that invisible line and move into more drastic measures, that's when the police step in and that's basically rioting or terrorism, anything like that. When they go too far, the police step in. But it's all been very, fairly peaceful. There's been one or two instances where there's there was I remember the first uh, uh, protest in London when everything was on serious lockdown someone was arrested um, don't know the circumstances around that but I remember seeing on the news that this chap was being arrested this old guy and the ye woman kept yelling in the police's face what has he done what has he done but she was right in their face and like pushing them and shoving them and that's got to be difficult and they didn't snap and push her back or like push her away or hit her or anything like that they just let her speak her mind while they arrested this other chap they just took him away and um, the patience and I would not be able to do that I usually have quite a short temper which I try to keep in check it's something that I have to work on almost daily um, just last last year and a half my temper has been frayed to the very breaking point but I still have to keep myself in check because you've got to deliver good service to customers and sometimes that means just biting your tongue and sitting there and <laughs> that's really difficult sometimes um, imagine yourself now, you come in, you've had a bad day, you're in full lockdown and you haven't spoken to anyone, um, you're bored, you're tired, you've had enough of this, you've 
you've got your computer out and nothing works and you've had to go to work on your computer and you come into a shop and it's the first chance of almost like freedom from that and you can let yourself go a bit and then you just uh, you don't realize it but you're in a bad mood in the shop still and you just snap at someone and take it take your whole day out on someone and then imagine that over and over and over again and that's what shop workers have to endure at the, even at the best of times even outside of COVID we had to endure that and I just think sometimes people people snap and people have bad days and they take it out on us it's not fair but we have to deal with it the problem comes when you yourself on the tills have a bad day and the people that have a bad day take it out on you that's where the managers come in the managers have been great but and they've been very patient with me to be fair because I've had a couple of outbursts but I'm just so sick of people taking their troubles out on me but it's something I'm working on it's all I can say it's something that I'm still working on but CDs anti-vaxxers anyone that wants freedom from this country it's coming in four weeks time and if we follow the rules then it might have come a bit sooner but uh, that's the government's decision and everyone says you know Boris Johnson he doesn't know what he's doing but no one's actually willing to say I could do a better job no one wants to take over the mantle everyone wants to criticize but no one actually wants to take charge and that's about as political as I'm gonna get on this video um, I just I just find myself sometimes thinking that I'm probably right in my first idea which is if you are approached by something that you find distasteful like CDs and anti-vaxxers and that sort of thing sometimes it's best not to say anything you know you're right and you know that the state backs you and you know the country backs you on that decision and these people are looking for a fight so much and they've been around for a while and they'll be around after this um, a lot of the information I'm guessing they get from the internet which doesn't always speak the truth um, but I think if enough people got together and started uh, something serious then I would have to speak up but it's not that case there's not enough of them to make a difference to what the government thinks or believes so at this point the best thing I can do is to let it be and um, not speak up because uh, they want me to speak up they want that challenge they want the the attention for it and I think that's where their power sort of lies they, they want to be they want to be heard by anyone in any way they want to be acknowledged in some way and even if that way is negative they want to be seen and heard because I'm guessing these are the sorts of people who are on almost like the fringes of society who are never seen and never heard and they want to be seen and heard even if it's in a negative way which is kind of sad really when I say it out loud it sounds sad but enough about me uh, rambling on you can uh, decide what you want to take from that and please uh, leave a comment down below um, 
I'd love to hear other people's views on this. Um, uh, I'm not going to argue with anyone. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with anyone. I'm just going to let your comment be unless it's rude or hateful. I will let your comment be and sit in the comments. And yeah, just let me know how you feel about this. And um, maybe we can find a common ground. Alright, I'm going to make dinner and then I'm going to start my broadcast. So, it should start as soon as this one comes out because it's going to take a little while to upload. Take care everyone.